If you take the position of the body-mind and are trapped in it through self-contraction, uh, you're looking at the world through the eyes of consciousness and thinking it's a thing itself, a concreteness, and you want to know, where did it all come from? Who created this? What's the purpose of all this? What's the purpose of life? God did this. God did this, God did that. Uh, you're, con you're constantly trying to account for an illusion. The very same situation in which this apparent illusion is appearing and you're concentrating on trying to figure it out because you're obsessed with it from the egoic point of view, at that very same instant, that which is always already the case prior to all conditions is the case. And that is by its very nature divine. It is the condition of all conditions, and if it were to be realized, there are no conditions. So the question of, who made all of this, doesn't come up. There is no this. It is an egoic presumption. It, it neither exists nor doesn't exist. It depends on how it is realized. Your own condition determines the nature of reality. If you are self-contracted as the body-mind, then there seems to be a concrete world, and you think you are in it. Whereas, if you even just thought about it for a moment, you see everything through, as I just said, the eyes of consciousness. You don't experience, nor have you ever experienced, a concrete world world, or a separate other. You have presumed these, you have created them, you have generated that presumption through self-contraction. The world is not a concrete experience for you, the world is a state of consciousness. You only experience it as a form of consciousness. You do not experience it in itself as a concrete reality. You presume it as a concrete reality. You see everything through the glasses of consciousness. The eyeball of consciousness. It's already in consciousness. The apparent mechanics of the body-mind, when you identify with the body-mind, are determining a certain kind of experience. But if you understand that you are not viewing anything from the perspective of the body-mind, but always and only from the position of consciousness, then you are beginning to understand your situation. You're not in the position of the body-mind. And you never have been. This is why, no matter what arises, you are the witness. It doesn't make any difference what apparent events take place in the field of consciousness. You are never anything but that. You never have been anything but that. You are full of questions and a life adventure because you presume you're something else. You are attached to the contents of the faculties in their self-contracted condition. You are not turned out from that contraction.
transcending the presumptions associated with the self-contraction. And so you do not realize the position you're actually in. You can't abide in it, you can't even directly realize it, because you're always, in one mode or another, identified with modes of self-contraction in this esoteric anatomy, this totality, uh, gross, subtle, and causal, that is the body-mind. You can identify with the body-mind which is simply a conditionally appearing illusion or modification of light, or you can stand identified with the position that is always already the case. And the nature of reality is determined by which of those two you stand in. Now, generally speaking, human beings presume themselves to be in the position of the body-mind. And you all, when you ask me questions, ask me questions based on presuming to be the body-mind. And for you, you see, then, uh, divine self-realization is about achieving a state that you're not in. But, in fact, you are in that state already. You just can't realize it. Why can't you realize it? Why isn't it self-evident? Because of self-contraction. Egoity. The arising of an illusion of separateness that superimposes its own characteristics on experience and makes consciousness appear to be fragmented, infinitely fragmented, by the characteristics of difference. Mm 